G'day, welcome to another Wimbledon Channel video. This is looking at HSC study tips. In case you're wondering who I am, my name's Scott Wimble. I'm a relatively experienced HSC teacher. I have taught modern history, ancient history, legal studies, uh, history extension, and I've done a couple of videos to help out my students and hopefully some other students to make sure they, can, they know how to study when it comes to getting ready for exams or for assessment tasks. Now I've talked about using the syllabus, I've talked about uh, going through past papers, I've talked about using the, the, the assessments, your trials, to make sure that you feel like you can um, improve the skills of essay writing, etc, etc, structuring essays, and all that kind of thing. Today I want to talk about graphically organising your notes. Now that might sound like a really weird kind of thing to talk about, but when most people talk about studying, in their mind, they're picturing a, um, a a booklet with a whole bunch of headings in it and their study notes. They've, they've got their, their book and they've thought through and they've got the topics and the headings for the sub subheadings for the topics and they've written out, this is what I know about this, this is what I know about this, and it's all represented in very black and white kind of structured way. Or they might have put it on the computer in a very similar way. They've opened a Word document. They've gone through their, their, node, their notes, maybe they've, uh, they've gone online, they've found some things they like, and they've done the exact same thing that way. Graphically organising your study notes is a different way of thinking that will hopefully increase your ability to remember stuff in exams and to make connections between themes or events or ideas or characters, depending on what you're studying. Now, let me give you an example. If we're talking about uh, modern history, you might say, what are the World War Two? What are the key turning points for World War Two? So you might put turning points as a as a mind map. We'll talk about a mind map. Turning points, and then off turning points, you might have some of the characteristics for what you think a turning point is. So maybe a, a switch in momentum, or a, a depletion of resources, or um, a strategic location changing hands. Whatever whatever's in there. You're going to put that down there, and then you're going to think through and go, well, okay, if we're talking about a switch in momentum, why was there a switch in momentum? Maybe three or four reasons coming off that as well. And then for each of those, you might start thinking through examples. What was a good example of that? Maybe we'll talk about um, the Battle of Stalingrad as a good example of that. And you, can, and you can put the Battle of Stalingrad and then think through and go, yes, that's a good example there, and you can write uh, because of this, and maybe, yes, share that characteristics and draw a line to that other characteristic and say strategic location and switch in momentum. Or maybe it had a kind of uh, change in you know, you know, resource depletion for this and this reason. And so you're starting to make connections, not just between kind of ideas, but examples as well. And what you're doing is you're creating in your mind uh, a graphic representation of what you know about turning points. It's exactly the same in, in legal studies or in history extension when you're thinking about a concept. So you might, you might say, uh, I'm looking at legal studies, I'm thinking about the idea of uh, equality. And you have equality there. And then you think through, well, what is equality? And you put some of the characteristics of equality there based on the definition. It's got to be this, 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 and this. And then from that, you start thinking about, well, what are some cases? What are some examples that really show that? And so you put a case there. And you've got, actually, that's a really good case because that, that doesn't just work for this example, but it also works for that one. And this is why. And you start to, to make connections. And what you're doing in your mind is you're being really active when you're studying. You're not just sitting there thinking, um, yeah, I'll type up these notes. There's that, that, and I'm copying word for word, or I'm trying to kind of just paraphrase something. You're actually thinking through being active. And what that's doing is it's forcing you to work while you're studying. I always say to my students, if you've got music on in the background, unless it's a really st distinct kind of music that doesn't take up much kind of like classical music or Baroque or jazz or something like that, uh, if there's lyrics there, in the back of your mind, you're using a little bit of brain computing power to listen to those lyrics and think to yourself, hey, I kind of, I, know, I like these lyrics or I know these lyrics or, or you know, what is he saying or what, what, did, what was that? Uh, so, you want the main part of your mind to be focused solely on making these connections and graphically representing your work and your study notes is a great way of doing that. And so what you can do is uh, you, can, you can switch it around. So maybe in legal studies, you can actually have a case and you put the case there 
mind map again. There's the case, and then you think through what are the things that this this that are important about this case. Um, it showed, you know, maybe there was a, a precedent set over here, or maybe it shows that uh, that it, that uh, equality was important for this group of people as well as that group of people, or maybe it 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 really changed the way the law defined a certain concept. And you think through that, and then you can start saying, well, were there other cases that were similar to that, or were there other things that sprang from that? And so you start to build a picture based around the case, not just connecting a case to a certain concept. You're forcing your brain to go, what else is there? Exact same thing in ancient history. Grab yourself a source. Stick it on an A3 piece of paper. Here's a vase from ancient Greece or ancient Rome. Here's a, here's a structure. Here's whatever the source is. Put the source there and then start thinking through. What can we tell about ancient Athenian society from that vase? Well, it's got two guys playing whatever, playing a sport on it. Okay, what are they wearing? That's interesting. Okay, what have we got? What was it made of? What's the vase made of? What's What else is on the vase? How long would the vase taken to do that? That shows us a couple of things. We can see, you know, what, what are the things we can tell about Athenian society from this vase? So there's multiple ways when we're just thinking through mind maps, let alone flow charts or other ways of graphically organizing your notes. Uh, but let's start simple with just mind maps. There's three or four different ways of using mind maps to get you thinking actively while you're studying. Actually thinking to yourself, how can I use this information in different ways? And it's a really helpful way of you to study when you're getting sick of perhaps just organizing notes. Get yourself a blank piece of paper and, and have, a, have a crack at going, okay, let's um, practice with this source over here. Or let's, let's, uh, let's pick a concept from the textbook, that one. Let's give that a go for legal studies. Or here's a case, um, how could I use that case? And what you're doing as well is you're, you're making connections so that when it comes to the exams, you've got a couple of sources there that you know relate to more than one area. So you can say, well, I can use this vase for industry, for ancient Athens, for sport or leisure, uh, for, for kind of um, whatever the, the source is. There might be multiple ways in which you can use the source. And it'll help you graphically organizing it and thinking through all the different ways to remember that, which means you don't have to remember 500 sources split into this, 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 and this. You can remember fewer sources and you've worked out how they relate in all those different ways. That's gonna help you when it comes to the exams. So there's just a, a bit of a rant about graphically organizing for studying. Um, hopefully this has been a helpful video. I might chuck a couple up there about other techniques that I use. Um, maybe even do one specifically about um, getting in the right mindset to study. Not sure why I did that random thing there, but oh well. 